Hello, hello. Um, we have a lab, an accounting lab, and it is causing a little bit of confusion. So I decided to make a short video explaining what the issues are. So uh, there is a small joke, meme from Facebook about rounding errors. So, all right, let's get into it. What we have is a situation where we have two sources of uh, problems. One source of problem with uh, our transactions. So here I have um, I have some transaction uh, data. So the original data was called transactions. And it is a list of floating point numbers with two decimal places. Um, and they are crisp. They are exactly what they should be, right? Um, if we represent those numbers as floating point numbers in our computer, uh, as F33 or uh, S32 or F64, um, we'll have um, inaccuracies coming from the representation of the floating point numbers. So some numbers uh, like two or four or eight or 1.125, 1, 1 uh, those numbers can be represented exactly as floating point numbers, but some numbers like uh, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.3, those numbers cannot be represented exactly. They will be represented as approximations. And those approximations will have sort of an expansion. They will have um, some um, part, which is either 999 or something, or 000, 000 and something. Uh, so those expansions generate some errors. So for example, if I um, have... 1.1 and f2.2, if I add those two numbers together, because those numbers cannot be represented exactly, um, the result is also not an exact um, um, crisp number. So the actual result is like 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so that is the actual result of adding those two numbers together. And those two numbers will not be represented as 1.1 or 2.2. They will be represented with a little bit of an extra, which ends up being this sort of the, let's call it dust at the end of the number, right? So the first source of problems with our accounting lab is inaccuracy, inaccuracy of representation a presentation of numbers. So as I'm saying, some numbers will be represented exactly. Some numbers will be represented as approximations. And those approximations uh, will add up to, to an error. And to demonstrate that error, um, we have, um, so I have here an ability to, um, let's see, to change so for the real for the original data set um, this is the original data set and I will change this to show so we save this and we uh, let me see we need to represent it as double so if we represent the um, our numbers, so again, if I go here, I do less. And now what we're doing is we're reading those numbers as if they are double, uh, double precision. What does that mean? Um, it means that we have approximately 14, maybe 15 uh, significant uh, digits. And then the numbers, our approximations will be kind of using uh, that amount of significance. And then we will have some rounding. Uh, so if we represent those numbers as doubles and we run our 
So I will say stack, we run our processor on those transactions. Um, we will see that the actual sum of the numbers appears to be correct. So the, uh, the sum, the actual sum should add up to um, 5,000,000, and the actual sum of all those numbers um, also, so that the, the sum of the transactions, the sum of the numbers appears to be correct. We don't actually have an error. There is already a little bit of a, you know, uh, hint that there is an error, but the error is smaller than two decimal places because we have this minus here, right? So the error is not exactly zero. The error is um, on the negative side. We like our sum is a little bit less than this, but it's not significantly less such that the, the actual error shows up here, right? But if I change our representation of those numbers to floats, uh, which is F32, um, now we will have, and we redo the processing. So if I redo that, um, so now we're reading the numbers as floating point numbers as F32, not as double, but as F32. Um, so you can see that the proper sum should add up to those 5,000,000, but our actual sum is short. It's short by $6, right? So this inaccuracies of representing the transactions as floating point numbers already give us an error which is quite significant. It's it's six six dollars. Okay, um, so that means we are you know six dollars short, and that means we have a little bit of a deficit. Our uh, transactions added up to a number which is smaller than what it should be. So it seems that in most cases. Um, so if I let me do this. Um, it, it, it seems that in most cases, those numbers are represented with the expansion, which has, in, instead of like 8.2, we have 8.1999 something. And those kind of expansions with nines give us the, the shortage. They give us this sort of the missing, uh, missing um, value. So this is the first source of problems. The first source of problems is that Floating point numbers cannot be represented exactly as our numbers. They will be represented not as this. They will be represented as approximations. And those approximations will add up to an error. And this error is in the first, first row. So if you're using floats, you already have an error. If you're using doubles for this set of transactions, you will not have an error. But look at this. If we go to double, and if we, oops, if we, instead of using our transactions original, we use the real transactions. Um, so what's the difference between those transactions and real transactions? The real transactions have a larger um, whole number part. So they use um, value here, which is using up a certain amount of significant digits which means we will have a problem uh, even with double running out of the precision such that our approximations will be not precise enough such that we will end up with an error. So now if I add up this um, uh, set of data and I will change that we are using transactions real. So we're using this one now we will see that even for double, we cannot escape the approximations and we will have an error. So those are the actual transaction sum. If we properly add all, the, all those numbers, if we add all those numbers together without doing any approximations as floating point numbers, uh, we should obtain this, uh, this sum. So let's try it out. Okay, and here we will see that the proper sum is correct, but 
So the proper sum should be this. Um, whereas we have the transaction sum uh, being short. Let, let me just double check the um, 640, 64. Yeah, so the, the proper sum is already having an error. So the error for the proper sum is $1.64. Um, I will explain in a, in a moment why in the proper sum we are already having an error. Uh, but if we just represent the numbers as, um, um, if we represent the numbers as doubles and we sum them up, we're running up out, out of significant and then our error is $280. So we have um, generated $280 too much because the sum should be 640 and we have uh, 920, right? So we, we have, um, yeah, a problem here. Um, why the proper sum has an error? Uh, let, let's, let's have a look of how the proper sum is calculated. Uh, so the proper sum is calculated in such a way that we um, uh, basically removing the dot. So we have removed the dot from those numbers. So we remove the dot and now we're treating the numbers as not floating point numbers, but as integers and we adding them together. So we have removed the dot, which means we need to have, um, and, we, and we did remove the dot by a very naive method, by just uh, uh, removing the dot <laughs> effectively, like taking it out of, the, of that string, which means we have a number now, which is like, you know, nine, five, two, six. Uh, so we, we simply remove the dot. If we have a transaction which doesn't have two um, places after, that would end up with a problem, right? Because we are treating all of them as if there is always two decimal points. And that's the case, like there is always two decimal places. Okay, so then we remove the dot and we have added them all together um, by doing the sum on the um on the integers right so we have um treated this as integers i hope the, the sum is as integers but as if it turns out uh the sum has not um been crisp uh it has a certain amount of uh, inaccuracy. So it suggests that we have a problem here. I will investigate later why, why we might have a problem here. Um, in any case, we are reintroducing the dot again, uh, and the reintroduction of the dot is by moving the, like, you know, dividing the, uh, the big number by 100, uh, injecting the dot, and uh, you know, adding the reminder of the hundred from the whole number. Uh, so we're doing some um, we're doing some level of integer arithmetic here because we're doing the integer division by hundred and the integer modulo uh, by hundred. So the results should be integers, and then we splicing them with the dot. Um, why we have the 1.40, what was the error? 1.40, 40, yeah, 64, 164, right? It should be exactly zero, but we have a little bit of a um, rounding problem here. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe the, the um, I, will, I will check why, why there is an error there. Anyway, the error, the error that I wanted to highlight is this one. So this is the error which comes from the approximations of the sum of, of each of the transactions to be represented not as a crisp integer, but as a, 
a floating point number. All right, so that is the first source of error. What is the second source of error? The second source of error is best represented by the uh, by the uh, sorry this one uh, by this data set. So there is another data set which is called one hundred, and then this data set is very simple. So let me save this. Let's go to three and let's less uh, transactions 100. This is a simple data set which has 100 transactions of one cent. Okay, so it's a very simple data set. It should um, basically add up to a one dollar, right? So it's a 100 transaction of one cent. So if we run, so if we run now this data set, um, 100, and it actually doesn't matter if we're using float or if we're using double. Let me show you. Um, I will use double. I will use float instead of double. So it's uh, F32. So now we will run our processor. And the sum is one dollar, and the sum with the floats is also one dollar, which means we don't run out of any significance. Uh, all the approximations are rounded to a proper numbers, and then our sum is correct. So we basically don't have an error on summing up the transactions, but we have an error on summing up the fees, because if you see the fees, well. For each transaction, I have a fee of zero, right? It's 0, 0.00. Why it's, why it's that? Because 0 0.01 multiplied by 30%, uh, that uh, shows as 0 0.003. And then we have to round it. We have to round it to two decimal places. And the rounding, like there is only one reasonable rounding for this, which means we round it down. Um, so we have zero zero. So that's where the zero zero comes from, right? So all our fees are zero, and therefore, if we double check it again, okay, let's put it on top such that it's more visible. So we have a deficit. So our fees sum is zero. But in fact, it should be 30 cents. So our fees should add up to 30 cents because that's what a 30% of $1 is. But individually, they are all zero. So individually, they add up with a you know, problem. Uh, because this particular processor rounds transactions and fees to down, um, we also, if I say earnings, we will also see that earnings are rounded down. So each individual earning is 0 0.007, uh, but it is kind of rounded down to zero. Um, we could round up earnings up uh, because 0 0.007 kind of makes sense to be rounded um, up, but we will still have an error, right? So. We currently have an error of 70 cents because we rounded everything down. If we round everything up, we'll have an error, error of 30 cents because the, the fee will end up being a dollar, but in fact, it should be 70 cents, right? Uh, so either case, we will have an error. So that's the second source of problems with doing um, this lab. And this source of problem is um, independent whether you're using doubles, whether you're using floats or whether you're using integers. In either case, you will have this rounding problem because you will not be able to represent uh, this amount and this amount in just two decimal places. You will have to do rounding, right? And then the way Guido did the rounding is wrong because he rounded everything down, so he's short. In terms of fees, um, 
is short 30 cents and in terms of uh, earnings he's short 70 cents um so how can you do the rounding like as i told you like if you do it down or up depending you know if, if we have a rule saying if it's less than half um we will round it down but if it is more or equal to half we will round it up uh, so this will be rounded up to one cent uh, and this will be rounded down to zero uh, you will still have an error uh, you will still have an error for this to be too short of 30 cents uh, and you will have for this you will have an error of 30 cents being too much because your earnings will add up to one dollar because you will run them you will round them up to one cent right so in either case you'll have a problem so how to solve this problem well there is a certain observations observation so the observation is that if you do 0 0.01 sorry one cent multiplied by 30 percent so multiplied by this it will give you this right and then you see that if you do any form of rounding you will have a leftover so let's say we we we're doing this um more intelligent rounding such that let's say we're doing if it's uh less than this we round it to zero and if it's more or equal to to this uh we will round it to one right so uh, actually to 0, 0.0 yeah so if we do this intelligent rounding for this number we have to round it down so we round it to zero but we have a three as a leftover right so what we will do is we will uh, treat this three this 0, 0.00 as a, as a kind of a value in a jar and this type of rounding is called jar rounding. So we have a jar, sort of a concept, where we put what we have as a leftover from the previous rounding. Um, so in this case, our jar has this amount. I will rewrite this into integers such that it's a little bit simpler to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So what we will do, we will represent one cent as an as an integer of 10 right so instead of saying 0 0.001 as one cent i will say i have 10 so i'm effectively multiplying it by one two three decimal places right so i'm kind of i'm multiplying it by three de um three decimal places to the uh you know so, so my decimal place is moving right and my significant numbers are moving left. And instead of talking about um, 0 0.01 dollar, I'm talking about 10. Um, so how would um, this number be represented? Well, yeah, you multiply it by, um, by 1000. So it will be 10, 0 this right so we are moving decimal place from here three places right wise so one two three and we have this number okay so you can represent all those transactions as um as a um integer which has the last digit zero right so for all our transactions um because we don't have the anything more than three decimal places this digit will always be zero, right? And we expect it to be zero because we can only represent one cent. So, and one cent means it's uh, number 10 and this final digit is zero. If this final digit is not zero, let's say this final digit is five, that means we have 1.5 cent, which we cannot represent because we cannot represent this here. Uh, because we are kind of getting into a floating point, so we, in other in other words, dollar we have this situation, right? So fifteen means we have 
15, but this five is outside of our scope. Like we only have two decimal places to represent it. So the final number has to be zero. Otherwise we have this rounding. Okay. So because of that, now if we represent uh, our transactions, so all our transactions of one cent are actually um, 10 and we have to uh, calculate what is the value of 30% uh, of this. Uh, because we have this extra digit, extra decimal place, we're not calculating, um, um, we, we're not multiplying it by um, 0, 0,3, but we're multiplying it by 0, 0, 0,003, right? So in, in other words, we are kind of not dividing it by three, but we are kind of dividing it by 30. So to calculate what is the 30% of one cent in this notation, I have to divide it by 30, okay? So then I will do two operations. I will do division, integer division, and I will do um, modulo. Right. So by doing this, I will have um, I will have the actual result, which in my case is zero. In in this particular case is zero, and then I will have the uh, reminder, which in this case is three. Uh, so I I have zero and three. And I'm operating only on integers here, right? It's exactly the same as with um, it's exactly the same as with 0 0.01 being um, multiplied by 0 0.3, and that gives me 0, 0.00, which is my fixed um, placeholder for my outcome, together with this three coming like actually it's zero 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 three as a reminder, right? So that's the the jar, the reminder. Uh, but I don't want to be doing any operations on floating point numbers. Why? Because of the first reason, because of the inability to express those numbers exactly. There will be approximations. So I don't want to touch floats at all in my operations, in my accounting. I only want to do operations on integers and then control the rounding myself. So I, I, I am not doing this because, you know, you remember 0, 0 0.003 cannot be represented exactly as this number. It will be represented probably as 29999, whatever the expansion is, and then I have a problem, right? Um, or it will be represented as something with something at, at the end, right? Um, so to avoid all of this, I will rep represent my jar as a integer, and then uh, I am doing the zero, and I'm not doing this. I'm doing um, I'm doing this instead. And here I will use um, integer division, and then here I will do the modulo, right? Um, how do you do integer division or modulo with integers using Haskell is to use the spe special functions. So in Haskell, those numbers are polymorphic. They can represent integers, but they can represent floats or they can represent uh, doubles. Um, so this is a polymorphic uh, literal, which represent a different type depending on what I mean. Um, and then I have the integer division function, which will treat this as an integer and this as an integer and it will give me an integer result. It's the same with modulo. In, in Rust, we don't have, um, we don't have uh, polymorphic literals. Uh, you have to specify your variable type and depending on your variable type, it will do the appropriate division. So if you use this division symbol, and those variables are of type integer or unsigned, you know, U64 or U128, then it will be an integer division. But if those are 
floating point numbers, this will be a floating point division. So depending on the type of your, of your variable, which you have to enforce, this will be either integer division or floating point division. And the same is with the module, although with modulo, I think it will probably, you will have to coerce it to integers. I don't know, I, I, I've done the implementation in, um, in Haskell, so in Haskell it's a, a little bit different way of, of dealing with this. So you, you say, I want to use, I don't want to use floating point division, I want to use integer division, right? Uh, so anyway, for the first transaction, we have three in the jar. We rounded it to zero, so we said, okay, um, the outcome, so the first, so if I say less transaction 100, so for this transaction, my result is zero, okay? Um, so let's write it. I have zero for the first transaction. Okay, so for the second transaction, I'm doing exactly the same. Uh, I'm dividing 10 by 30, I get uh, zero. Plus, um, I have this modulo, uh, which gives me three. Uh, so now, because from the previous one, I already had three, now I have in my jar, I actually have plus six because I'm adding what was in the jar to what is currently in the jar. And I'm making a decision. What do I do? Um, do I keep zero or do I round it such that it actually rounds up and uh, in my jar, I will have a deficit? Because we, we're using the rule of rounding up from, uh, from five, up, we rounding up, and from zero to four, we rounding down. Now we have six. So what happens is we actually say our result is so our result now is six. Um, so I will round it up to ten, right? So I will say my result is ten, and then I have. Um, 10 minus 6, because 6 was the uh, the result. So uh, I, I, actually it's, you know, um, 6 minus 10. So I have minus 4 in my jar. I have a deficit in my jar uh, of minus 4, but I have rounded the second transaction to 1 cent, to 10. So here we say, okay, here my result was zero, zero. Here my result is zero, one, zero. Like this one is not significant because I cannot represent it, but I rounded it to one cent, okay? So now um, this is my transaction fees. The first one is zero, zero. The second one is zero, one. And I remember that I have minus four in my jar. So then I calculated for the next one again. Uh, I have zero for the division and I have uh, plus three for the jar, for the reminder. So I will unify minus four with plus three. So then I end up with minus one in the jar. And again, the result is zero with <clears throat> minus one in the jar. So then I will do it's zero. So then I will do the next one. So we have already processed three transactions. Let's process uh, two more. So the next one again will be zero for the whole part and plus three for the reminder. I have plus three minus one. So I will end up with plus two in the jar. Plus two is smaller than five. So I'm not rounding it up, I'm rounding it down. So in that case, I will end up with zero. So for the next transaction, I have also zero, zero, um, sorry. And then for the next transaction, uh, again, we have zero for the whole part and we have um, plus three for the reminder. Uh, we have plus two in the jar, so we will end up with plus five. So now I can, I have a choice again of rounding it down or up. Um, if I round it up, I will have a deficit of half of a cent. If I round it down, I will have a surplus of half of a cent, right? So it's a little bit, um, 
it's up to you like how how you set the rules but because we set the rules that we are rounding upwards it means we will have now a deficit of five and we will say the result of this transaction is actually 10 which is the uh one cent so we will have plus zero zero one and at that point um we have one two three four five transactions uh the fee for five transactions should be what um so let's let's check that so i have uh, 0 0.003 in theory uh five times so it's 1.5 right so the fee should be 1.5 again uh that's the actual fee uh, so the real fee is uh 0 0.15 and our calculated one is 0 0.002 because we have this one and this one so we are off by half cent right um so the real fee should be one five but our calculated fee is zero two uh, which is wrong by half of the cent um so if we set 0 0.1 we would be wrong by half of the cent and because we set 0 0.2 we are also wrong by half of the cent but in this case we are half of the cent short for the fee in this case we said the fee is zero two but that's half of a cent too much right um it's fine uh we cannot be perfect because we cannot represent this number with just two decimal places so we have to be wrong uh so we are either wrong by being too short or we are we are wrong by being too much but the error is half of the cent right um in our original calculations um we were short by one cent because our in our original calculations we were rounding it down always which means the fee should be 0 0.1 and a half cent but we are one and a half cent wrong right so here we are um with our original calculations our error is one point half cent of an error here we are always up to half of a cent wrong uh, so our error if we're doing this jar accounting will be never bigger than half of the cent sometimes will be exactly what the fee should be sometimes will be a little bit too short or a little bit too uh, too much but the error will never be bigger than half of the cent and that's what the lab is about the lab is about from first reason uh, not using floats um we don't want any approximations we want the numbers to be exactly what they are so in in um so in this case we want the numbers to be 0 0.01 we don't want any approximations we don't want any floating point approximations for our number can 0 0.1 be represented exactly as a double or exactly as a float no it cannot uh, but the approximations are good enough such that those numbers um uh can be treated as float and then rounded up to the uh, to the integers by multiplying it by 100 if you do that with floats or with double for these numbers it will actually end up being correct uh but for the other transaction data it will not uh so you know the best way is to replace the dot without ever converting this to floating point number and always treating it as an integer um, so in our case we want to read one or you know we as i was showing we multiplied by 10 and we want to read 10 for all those numbers so the first rule uh, never use floating point numbers for currency or for anything that you want a precision to, to control the precision so that's the first point the second point is um use your own rounding rules uh, and you specify what those rules are and then you use your own ra rounding rules and in this particular case you should use jar rounding so jar rounding is a term which is used for the uh, rounding that I explained and it uses integers and it uses modulo and um, 
you know, um, keeps a jar uh, for each transaction and then uh, uses it to round each individual transaction in such a way that it adds up correctly. So if you do jar accounting for this set of transactions, you actually will end up with 30 cents fee, which is exactly what it should be. You will not have any error. So for this particular data set, you will have no error at all. Um, for some data sets, your error might be plus minus um, uh, half cent at most. So your error will be contained to being not bigger than half of the cent. Um, and that's it. So that's how you should do should do uh, the Guido lab, and that's what uh, you should use. I will double check why for this uh, real transactions I'm getting uh, an error. So there is also a, another data set, um, and this one demonstrates the uh, the lack of precision even for floating point numbers of double. Uh, so we have uh, 1 million transactions. The transactions are quite nice. Um, I will show you. Uh, okay. So Let's see, yeah, that's Guido. So let's do the here. Here, um, less transactions, 1 million. So this is uh, 1 million transactions and each transaction is a million and one cent. So it's 1 million and one cent, 1 million and one cent. And we have million of those, right? What can go wrong? Um, well, let's see. So let's convert it to double. Float will definitely not work, but look uh, what will happen with double. So if we have 1 million transactions and each transaction is um, uh, 1 million and 1 cent, we basically shifting the decimal points six, uh, six places left, right? So if you imagine, um, the um, one cent. Uh, so by shifting it twice, we have uh, one, and then we shifting it three, four, five, six times, right? So our one cent ends up here, and the same happens to the to the millions, right? So everything is shifted, kind of um, the decimal point is shifted right, right hand side, so we are adding zeros. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the rest, right? So this is correct real time, uh, real transaction sum, and th those are the real fees and real uh, earnings, right? So now, if we do this, if we do our we do trans. Uh, calculations. What will our error be if we're using double? Well, our error will be enormous. Um, so the proper sum is correct. Uh, and then for transaction sum, we already off by $8.09. So our approximations for 1 million and, and 1 cent for this number are big enough to add up to this error. Um, and then we have obviously errors calculating the um, the fees. So we are 3,000 short because you know we're rounding down to the nearest uh, number. And the same for, uh, for fees. We sort of rounding down. So we are missing that uh, the 7,000. So 3,000 and 7,000 kind of are missing. The interesting thing is that even if we are um, calculating the fees total on that sum, we also have an error because our sum is wrong. Our sum is not crisp, right? So that's, that is kind of um, a simpler data set compared to transactions real, um, which demonstrates that, that, that you cannot use a floating point numbers. And then the rounding comes from, from, from here.
So I hope it explains and I hope uh, you will have no problem kind of correctly doing the, the lab and keeping the error um, within plus minus half of a cent. So your, your result should be off by, by basically half of the cent, either half of a cent too short or half of a cent too much, but it, it should be, you know, uh, either exactly correct number of cents or being kind of a one off on either side. Don't submit wrong implementation with errors for your portfolio. Uh, it has to be correct. All right, good luck.